Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of an IFS Z Brief. Uh, for, for this episode, we've got um, uh, Anastasia Matthews, uh, my colleague from the IFS. Anna, thanks for joining us. Um, we wanted to actually flesh out a little bit more detail of one of the, the double features that we have available right now to screen from the IFS website. And it is, of course, our, our very good friend um, and uh, esteemed filmmaker Alex Cox's double feature of Straight to Hell, specifically Straight to Hell Returns, and uh, Highway Patrolmen, which are being bundled up and offered as a two for one. And we actually still have a few codes to give out to anyone who would like to, to watch those for free. If, if you want to reach out to us, we'll give you the codes. Just drop us a line. <clears throat> um, Straight to Hell came out in 1987. Uh, and, and then what, we, what your Straight to Hell Returns has a, a few things that were amended uh, and, and added by uh, Phil Tippett. It basically, it's a story about hapless robbers who you know, they bury their loot and hide out in a deserted desert town. It's a, a send up of spaghetti westerns. Um, it was it was shot in uh, Almeria, Spain, which was a popular site for other spaghetti westerns. And um, it, 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 it features all kinds of wonderful musicians like Elvis Costello, the Pogues, and Joe Strummer. Uh, Courtney Love is also in there. Uh, and uh, Cy Richardson, who's a regular in Alex Cox films, and it has a cameo by uh, Jim Jarmusch as well. This was Alex Cox's follow-up to Sid and Nancy, and um, and he he came out with Walker after this one. Uh, in you know when I when I when I see this like when I first saw it, uh, it was its own thing, and then when I when I revisit it. Uh, you know, as I did when I watched Straight to Hell Returns, I couldn't help, and, and I'm, I'm not alone in this, but I couldn't help to, to, to notice that it was just a film that clearly must have been a big influence on Quentin Tarantino. And, uh, and I just, I didn't have time to do a very deep search on this, so I just did a quick, you know, Google search right now and, and saw that um, <laughs> uh, IndieWire, back in 2011, so nine years ago, they, uh, they basically were interviewing Alex and they said, you know, Straight to Hell is now seen as a precursor to Quentin Tarantino movies. And um, Alex answered by saying, well, I think people say that because the character uh, Norwood, uh, Cy Richardson's character, is quite similar to the one Samuel L. Jackson plays in Pulp Fiction. And they, they dress the same, you know, with the, the skinny ties. But there's more to it than that. There's also like the trunk shots and some other things. Um, but I do think that, uh, that I'm sure too, that, uh, Tarantino would be the first to fess up that he saw this when he was at the, uh, working at a video, uh, store and was very impressed by, it. uh, when I, I actually, I first saw it when I was working at the video station here in Boulder and, um, and was also really impressed with it. But I, I am always just can't wait to hear about someone who's coming to it for the first time such as you. So Anastasia, what was your take? I had a lot of fun watching this film, both films included in the double feature. Uh, and it's also fun. I'd like to add at the end of the double feature, there's a quick 20 minute conversation with Alex where he talks briefly about them. So that's a nice added bonus. Um, but yeah, Straight to Hell Returns has a lot of fun elements to it. The pacing is great and it's absurd in really fun ways that just with a fairly simple plot, they're able. Alex is able to bring out a lot of fun qualities, and I have to really highlight the presence of the Pogues in this film. It was a lot of fun for me. I grew up with the Pogues, and oh. so to see this, yeah. them included in this, was a real treat for me. Um, but I can't recommend it enough. It was a lot of fun to watch, and a nice change of pace from a lot of the things I've been watching recently. So. Highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, and um, and so so after he did Straight to Hell, uh, then he did Walker, and while they were doing some location shoots for Walker, um, they actually ended up uh, Alex um, and uh, I can't remember who else right now, but uh, they were they were in cars, you know, in taxis, and and just going around and and doing location shoots and. 
And it was, uh, he's got some very interesting stories about how those ended up inspiring the stories that he was hearing um, while doing location shoots for, for Walker, how those inspired the next movie after Walker, which was Highway Patrolman, which came out in 1991. And I love this movie. I really genuinely, I love this movie and I want everyone to see it because it's so good. It's just, it's got, it's got a lot of things to say about, um, you know, police corruption and, um, but also just about being human and, uh, and, and the way it's shot, it's just, uh, he really makes great use uh, of, of the landscapes, but also just incredible tracking shots. And uh, I can't speak enough about it. So the fact that you can get these two things, you know, you know, bundled up and, and if you notify us for free, um, Anna, what did you think of Highway Patrolman? I have to agree, this is another great film. Um, something that stood out to me in which they bring up in the, com or the interview at the end of the films is that this is a film in Spanish, not in English. So it's kind of curious how Alex worked with that aspect, but um, they answer that in the commentary. So I'll leave that up to them if you want the answer. Uh, but it was, it does have a lot of social commentary and, but how it's treated is, it is in a very human way and it has a nice character development throughout that you're kind of trying to figure out how you feel about these characters as you're seeing them make these decisions. But you know, again, I'm, I'm so glad that you brought up the whole thing about the, the fact that it is in Spanish because that in and of itself is a sort of a radical act in, in, in terms of releasing a movie to an American landscape because, right. you know, Americans just want to have, they want to be spoon fed everything to the point where it's, it's, it's not even uh yeah, you know, I mean, like when you watch a world war two movie, you know, the Germans get dubbed it like it's, or not, they're not even dubbed. They're, they're just speaking English with an, a German accent, which is insane. I mean, that's just like, that, that that should be pulling you out of the bubble, but everyone just buys it because, you know, people just want to just be spoon fed. And the fact that he does go to, um, he, he shoots in Mexico, he uses a, a cast of, of, of Mexican actors, um, employing, you know, locals uh, and shooting in the local language. Those were all elements that were really largely unheard of then and still, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> uh, not something that you see a lot of in, in Amer in, on the American cinema landscape. So that is an incredible and great thing, one of many, about Highway Patrolman. And I'm so glad that you um, latched onto that. Um, so... Uh, I, I've been, I usually tend to go on a little bit too long here, so I'm going to cut things here. But I will say um, that, uh, you know, again, please do visit uh, our website at internationalfilmseries.com where you can click and screen titles for uh, a small fee, uh, some for $4 up to 12 and it gets split between us and independent movie distributors. And this is really helping us out while we're kind of riding out this bizarre quarantine you know, moment, um, which was probably going to go on for a few more months, hopefully just a few more months. Um, we do have a, a great fun title that's going to be dropping onto the website uh, tomorrow, Friday, September 11th. And I think it's going to provide a lot of uh, much needed good cheer. It's a new documentary uh, and it's all, it's, it's, uh, it's about the Beatles and it's called Meeting the Beatles in India. And speaking of the Beatles, for those uh, who might be tuning in to this here in the Boulder area, I'd like to give a shout out to our friends at the Bodecker uh, Theater and the Cinema, uh, who've allowed me to co-host their weekend drive-in movie, um, which will be a sing-along version of Yellow Submarine. Uh, now, both Friday and Saturday shows have already sold out, but they still have spots open for Sunday, uh, 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 an added night that they put on. So um, please do go to thedairy.org 
for more information. Um, and, I, and, and one last thing that I want to let Anna know about is that Jason, Jason's so tired of my crappy audio. Uh, he's telling me that I need to get a, a real microphone. So I, I, I now have a microphone stand. It's, it's missing the, the microphone, but um, that's, that's on back order. So at some point, there might be some, some, some better audio from inside of this space. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I don't even care about... <laughs> Uh, the audio from your space because I just I love seeing that um, that carbon arc projector behind you. It's just such a nice backdrop. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, and for those uh, who are only tuning in right now, uh, Anastasia is also a projectionist uh, who handles our 35 projectors um, as well as the digital stuff. And we can't wait to get back into the theater, get get back into the booth, and get back into Munzinger. Uh, where we can share things on the big screen. But until then, we hope that you join us in partaking of the theatrical video on demand titles that are being made available through our website. Um, and uh, so thanks again, Anna, for coming out to talk about these things that are being made available through our website. And I'm sure we'll pick up something else next week. <laughs>